the light adjustable lens insertion process is different from the insertion process for any other lens implant. In this video, I'm going to share with you some teaching points from five different LAL insertions. Let's go. Case number one, by the book. This is our first LAL insertion. The LAL is made and distributed by a company called RX Sight. This video is the recommended official by the book method that they recommend in 10 steps. Number one, we fill the insertion cartridge with viscoelastic. Number two, we remove the LAL from the sterile packaging and are instructed to hold the haptics with our instruments. We are advised to not hold the lens optic as that may interfere with the active shield of the LAL. Number three, we place the LAL into the insertion cartridge in the reverse S configuration with the leading haptic close to the tunnel and then close the wings of the cartridge slowly to capture the edges of the optic. Number four, as we close the wings, we bring the trailing haptic up over the rear ledge of the cartridge. Number five, we also check to make sure that the leading haptic tip is pointing toward the tip of the tunnel of the cartridge. Number six, the wings of the cartridge are then brought together and the configuration of the lens and haptics are visualized to make sure that the leading haptic is pointing toward the tip of the tunnel. Number seven, the cartridge is then backed into the lens inserter until it meets resistance and cannot be advanced further. Number eight, the locking ring is then rotated fully to lock the cartridge into a secure position. Number nine, for lens insertion, we insert the cartridge bevel down through our 2.8 millimeter incision. Number 10, the lens is slowly inserted with the following steps. Make sure there is a full fill of viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. If the chamber shallows and the posterior capsule moves anteriorly during insertion, I can foresee the leading haptic breaking the posterior capsule. As the leading haptic enters the eye, the cartridge bevel is still downward facing toward the posterior capsule. Next, as the leading edge of the optic emerges from the tip of the cartridge, the leading haptic dives posteriorly. In order to deliver the lens in the normal position, we have to rotate the cartridge counterclockwise or slightly to the left, about 90 degrees. So now the bevel of the cartridge has moved from facing the posterior capsule to facing to the right. We then deliver the lens and the trailing haptic into the bag successfully. At the conclusion of this first LAL insertion, the LAL looks beautiful in the eye. This is the by the book insertion method. Case number two, this lens requires counterclockwise rotation and extra viscoelastic. Here we are inserting a second LAL, bevel down, then rotating counterclockwise to deliver the optic in the correct position. This lens exits the cartridge tilted 45 degrees when the insertion cartridge has been rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it appears that if we want to deliver the optic in a planar configuration, we would have to rotate the cartridge 135 degrees counterclockwise, which may not be possible given the orbital anatomy of some patients. We have to double clutch the metal plunger to deliver the trailing haptic into the eye, then dial the trailing haptic into the bag with a second instrument. Case number three, using the soft board injector for the W. Since we use the Bausch & Lomb soft board injector for our go-to monofocal lens, the Bausch & Lomb LI61AO, which is also a three-piece lens with a silicone optic and PMMA haptics, in this case, we tried inserting the LAL into the eye with the soft port injector. To be as safe as possible, we positioned the LAL underneath our microscope with the leading haptic tip pointing toward the front of the soft port injector tip. We also meticulously placed the trailing haptic underneath the soft port plunger, so our LAL is perfectly positioned inside the soft port injector. We then advanced the plunger and see the leading haptic oriented perfectly. 
we place extra viscoelastic into the eye to fill the capsular bag. As we insert the LAL, we notice that there is significantly more resistance between the LAL optic and the edges of the soft port injection cartridge. So we have to exert more pressure than we normally apply when inserting the LI61AO to push the LAL into the eye through the cartridge. The lens is delivered in a planar configuration, which is good. So we're not dealing with the LAL rotation that we experienced with the LAL approved injector. Next, when we retract the plunger to a position that enables us to push the trailing haptic into the eye, there's again more resistance to movement of the LAL with this maneuver than we experience with the LI61AO. So in order to deliver the trailing haptic, we have to slowly remove the tip of the soft port injector from the eye, which causes the LAL optic to contact the angle of the eye and exit the tip of the cartridge, which allows us to then push the trailing haptic out of the cartridge and into the anterior chamber. A second instrument is used to dial the trailing haptic into the capsular bag. So the lessons learned using the soft port injector is number one, it is possible to deliver the LAL into the eye with the soft port injector, but it is not as easy as inserting an LI61AO that in theory has the same lens and haptic materials as the LAL. Case number four, using the soft port injector for the L. For this next surgery, we try to use the soft port injector just like we did before, taking the time to perfectly place and orient the LAL optic and haptics in the soft port injector. We visually inspect the position of the LAL in the soft port injector. All systems go. We then insert the LAL into the eye. Leading haptic is good. Optic is good. Trailing haptic. Wait, what do we have here? We have the trailing haptic inside the soft port injector, but disinserted from the LAL optic. The act of retracting the soft port injector plunger to move the plunger from the optic to the trailing haptic caused the trailing haptic to disinsert from the LAL optic. We then use IOL cutters and microforceps to cut and dial the LAL out of the eye. As we begin to remove the LAL from the eye, we can also see that the leading haptic was bent slightly during the insertion process through the soft port injector. So after we remove the LAL with the amputated haptic from the eye, we use the RX site official injector to successfully implant the replacement LAL and the patient's LAL looks beautiful at the end of this surgery. So the lesson learned here is use of the soft port injector is probably not advisable for inserting the light adjustable lens. Case number five, Murphy always shows up. Just when we think we have all the bugs eliminated from our LAL insertion process, let me share one final case. We load the lens in the usual manner, then begin to push the LAL through the insertion cartridge when we notice that the leading haptic is kinked or folded backwards toward the LAL optic. If we insert the lens into the eye, the haptic will be bent and the LAL will not center normally. So we reopen the insertion cartridge, remove the LAL, and inspect the bent leading haptic. Then using two forceps, we methodically reshape and reconfigure the leading haptic into a normal conformation. We're careful to make sure that the haptic is in the correct shape and angulation after we manipulate it. We then reload the same lens into the injection cartridge and deliver the LAL successfully into the eye. The LAL appears perfectly centered at the conclusion of this surgery. So after using the LAL for the past three months, our patients seem happy with their vision. The LAL does require extra time and care to load and deliver into the eye. If you're an ophthalmologist planning to use this lens, I hope you can learn from the tips in this video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.